Ever wondered what real world engineering projects look like? Stick around to hear my experience as an engineer in the supply chain industry. Now with this minor change, I was able to save the company over $63,000 per year. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to talk to you today. I'm really excited because in this video, I'm going to discuss my one of many real world engineering projects. And if you do not know already, I am an industrial engineer for United Parcel Service, AKA UPS. I've been with the company since 2021, started off as an intern. And then over the years, I was promoted to a full-time associate to now a full-time supervisor. Before we get started though, I do want to say that even though I'm going to share one of my engineering projects, I will leave some details in the gray solely because I don't want to get in trouble, y'all. And I don't want to expose anything by accident that I'm not supposed to. So I hope you understand that. Okay, so a while back in one of my YouTube videos, I had a comment and I'll post it on the screen so you can pause it and read it yourself. Essentially, they wanted to know what it truly looks like to implement a continuous improvement cycle, a CI cycle and how to make a process more efficient. Specifically, they were interested in knowing what I have done in my career so far. Before we get into more details about the project, I do wanna say something, and that is that this is gonna be more for the industrial, manufacturing, quality control, or perhaps the systems engineering, you know, people. So this is more towards this area of realm. So bear with me. First, let's establish a simple definition for CI, continuous improvement. A continuous improvement engineer will strategically implement lean manufacturing to continually improve the production process. And a definition for efficiency is, engineering efficiency measures your ability to achieve your goals without wasting resources. Now that we understand the CI or the efficiency from a definition standpoint, we are ready to dive into my engineering project. This project I am about to tell you is a prime example of how to make an operation more cost efficient. And fun fact, I actually completed this project at the beginning of this year. It's fairly recent and it's one of my favorites because of how simple the solution was. Even though it had some simplicity, it was still very impactful. Okay, so enough talk, so here we go. So picture this. I go to a UPS building to check up on things, and to my surprise, I make a discovery. I notice one of our equipment is running on diesel fuel. The UPS building I was at, in particular, did not have a diesel refueling station. I made another discovery and realized that we, UPS, were paying a towing expense that was really expensive to tow the heavy equipment away from the UPS building so that you know, it can be refueled with diesel, you know, for, you know, at the nearest gas station. Obviously, I put my engineering thinking hat on and saw a way to improve this operation or system. What I set out to do was to completely eliminate the towing expense and to reduce any additional time the tow truck would take to, you know, take away the equipment and bring it back, you know, to use. Real quick, because I forgot to mention this detail in the video, is that the whole reason why UPS was paying the towing company to go to the nearest gas station was because the heavy equipment was not road worthy. Okay, so now you know that information. Let's continue on. I made the necessary phone calls and sent out the emails. And next thing you know, I was able to get the buy-in from my colleagues and upper management and was able to exchange the diesel run equipment for an unleaded one. What's the difference you may ask? The UPS building I was visiting does have an unleaded refueling station. So this will completely eliminate the towing expense and any additional idle travel time. Now with this minor change, I was able to save the company over $63,000 per year. Think about that, that's a lot of money. I was able to make the operation more efficient because I reduced the amount of idle time that the operation had to endure because of the towing 
And I was able to have a continuous improvement mindset because I completely eliminated that towing expense. So in other words, I made the operation more cost efficient and uh, I may save more money for the business. Bottom line is because this was something I stumbled upon, I was just glad to stop the bleeding, you know? So, and I say bleeding because that was an unnecessary expense. And as an engineer, as an industrial engineer, we try to look at specifically looking at systems to make them more efficient by looking at the cost reductions or, you know, just optimizing the flow, right? And this was just one way that I saw an improvement. I was really happy with this one. And it's just a simple solution, but again, very impactful. And as I mentioned before, <laughs> even though I said it's simple, you have to understand that there's a lot of moving pieces behind it. You know what I mean? So a lot of phone calls, emails sent out. I mentioned that you have to get the stakeholders or your colleagues, you know, or upper management's buy-in. This is the critical part because if you're going to make a change, you have to be able to communicate that to people. You have to be able to express your thoughts, help others understand your vision, help others understand why you're trying to implement this change, why you're trying to do it in the first place, right? I think, you know, and, and this can go back to engineering processes and methodologies such as the domain process. You, you know, you define it, you measure it, analyze it. What am I missing? You implement and then you control. All those different pieces were part of it. Even though it's a simple solution, I still have to go through all these, you know, processes of my own so that they can be done. It wasn't just a matter of, hey, make a phone call and then do it like that. You know, this is a, I work for a, big company, a Fortune 50 company. There's a lot of people involved. It's not just me and I'm just one person, part of a big team. But as I mentioned before, once you identify the problem, then you're able to come up with the proposal and you present it to your stakeholders or in this case, my colleagues or upper management. And you, I was able to get their buy-in. Once I got their buy-in, we're full, you know, full steam ahead. And, you know, it, it was easier from there. But that's important, get their buy-in. In conclusion, no matter how complex your engineering project can be or how complex you look at a system, you still have to do the basic stuff, right? And and that's going to be identifying the problem, analyzing it, you know, talking to your stakeholders or your colleagues or whoever you need to talk to, and then getting their buy-in. I think that's the most important part of what I wanted to show you guys or teach you guys today, if you get anything from this video, is that... Yeah, all I did was exchange that heavy equipment, but all the moving pieces behind it is what really I want you to look at. And that's really how engineering works, right? They say 100% of the time, it's not fully engineering concepts, you know, making new designs or improving, you know, things in that. You're gonna have certain percentages, right? 10%, 15% paperwork, documentation, another 15% of procedures, another 15% of actual engineering, another 15%. So. However that percentage looks like for you, or maybe you're just getting started, you're a student and watching this video. Just know that no matter how big or small the project is, you're still a moving piece. You're still gonna create a domino effect. And those are the habits that you're building on now so that later on you can continuously improve on those good habits, right? Getting the buy-in, communicating, writing emails, call, phone, cold calling. Those are skills that it takes to become an engineer regardless of where you are. Unless you're a coder in the computer all day, don't talk to anybody, then that's fine. But even those people, I would argue that they have to present their ideas to somebody. They need to, at some point, talk to people. There's a lot to learn from this project because of all the different pieces to it. That's all I got for you guys, so thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment, okay? Our goal is to get to 500 subscribers and we are, I believe, at 440 something. We're getting close. And if you want to be part of the journey of the 500 subscribers, then don't forget to subscribe. All right, that's all I got for you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.